Are you up? Just tell me when. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're reconvening this planning and and uh, environmental committee meeting. Uh, and before we start on the next issue, and I'm not predicting that we are going to need it, but rather than getting caught up with the fact that it's 11 o'clock, I'd like to have a motion to go past the hour of 11. Mayor, Mayor and Councillor Ganan, all in favor? That motion carries. Thank you. Okay, so <laughs> we are on item P8417, which is a recommendation report for the new comprehensive zoning bylaw corresponding implementation official plan amendment 47 and resolution relating to the future zoning amendments. Okay, so the recommendation is that report PD 07117 regarding the new comprehensive zoning bylaw corresponding implementing official plan amendment 47 and resolution relating to future zoning amendments dated June 12th <coughs> be received and that the official plan amendment number 47BN is hereby adopted and that a corresponding bylaw be presented to council for adoption as found at attachment one to this report and that the 20-day appeal period commence following Township Council adoption and that 30, Section 3417 of the Planning Act apply and that no further public meetings are required for the comprehensive new zoning bylaw and that the new comprehensive zoning bylaw as found at attachment 2 to this report be adopted and the corresponding bylaw be adopted and bylaw as found at attachment number three to this report be adopted by Township Council to address future zoning amendments that the Township Council may be willing to consider as it relates to the new comprehensive zoning bylaw. I need a mover. Councillor Bell. Councillor Billsma. Okay, Mr. Treble, could you please explain briefly this zoning bylaw? We've had this before us since before Christmas. I know you've been working on it for two years, you and your team. So if you could just Give us a quickie. Certainly. Um, I'll start with the official plan amendment because there's kind of three pieces to this report. The official plan amendment was identified back before Christmas um, as a place where there were a couple of discrepancies between the existing official plan policies and how the zoning bylaw seemed to be logically starting to implement itself. So one of the adjustments deals with MDS uh, requirements to make sure that we're implementing MDS appropriately when it comes to severances and whatnot. Another um, policy set is to deal with the concept of um, how to deal with home industries and home occupations. Um, the, and there's there's two others, which I think one is to do with uh, affordable housing and, and, and that kind of concept, and I forget the, the fourth one, Madam Chair. Anyway, those are really just housekeeping pieces that need to come along with this bylaw to make it implement. The bylaw is dealing with the whole of the township. Um, this bylaw has changed a little bit on a site specific basis, but the general gist of the bylaw is really unchanged since the one that we circulated to council before Christmas, for sure. Um, it implements new uses for the whole of the township, but the, the key piece of the bylaw is number one, it makes it easier for the staff and public to understand it because it doesn't have you jumping all over the place like the old bylaw does. Um, number two, it's in keeping with today's terminology um, in terms of the types of uses. For example, um, the concept of drive-ins instead of drive-throughs and, and um, motor, motor hotels. And there was something else we read even just today that you're kind of thinking, okay, that was in the 70s. And, and then the third thought is the fact that um, it's dealing with the intensification concepts that we really need to start dealing with. With the old bylaw, every time a developer came along with a newer and higher density, they basically wrote the bylaw for us, and they're getting used to doing that around here, it's pretty clear. Now we've got a bylaw that really contemplates what the higher density should look like, what the setbacks inside that higher density should look like, and so that we can give those to the developers and say, here you go, here's some standards, try and achieve these. If you can't achieve these, then come talk to us. But don't come writing the bylaw every time. That's kind of the, piece, the third piece. The final piece of this puzzle is, is a piece that the province has put in place through this Bill 73 process that Mr. Arians kept referring to. If we pass this bylaw and we don't pass a resolution, no member of the public, including the, the two lone soldiers that are going to keep it out to the end, no member of the public can make an amendment to the bylaw. 
Right. However, we're proposing a resolution that goes along in keeping with the discussions we just had that basically says we didn't pre-zone any of the areas on stream. So if we didn't pre-zone them, then we have to give them the right to bring a zoning application in with their plan of subdivision application. So we've put together a resolution that basically says try and achieve our zone categories that we've written for you, but when you've got your planning application in, bring a rezoning, we'll entertain it. That's the way we've, we've drafted the resolution piece, so it's open. Um, Phelps also has the feed mill downtown. I think that's pretty common knowledge now. And they have development concepts coming in on that in the future. And so they're concerned that if those concepts come in, we can have those discussions. And if this resolution is passed, yes, we can to try and see what we can achieve on the, on the conversion of the feed mill property. So there's three pieces, Madam Chair. They all kind of go together. The last piece is new. It's a resolution in the form of a bylaw that basically says we'll allow applications after the date of passage of this bylaw because our secondary plans written to contemplate that. Farmers that want APOs need rezonings and, and other sites around town might not be able to achieve what we've put in place either. Does that help in a nutshell? If there's something we forgot or if something that happens because you now need to park space cars in front of your house or something like that or electrical installations, tell us what happens. In terms of amending the bylaw? Right. When will that start? Maybe two months after we pass this one? There'll still be well, changes is what I'm saying. Yeah, there, of course. We, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to be the first one to admit that we probably don't have this 100% right, but it's a whole lot better than what we're dealing with now in the form of a bylaw from 40 years ago. Um, so we could be dealing with housekeeping amendments down the road. I guess I think this is a better document than what we've got. And I'd recommend council approve it with that in mind. Start the appeal process and see if we can uh, get this implemented. So, having heard that, are there any questions from yeah. members of the committee? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I got it right here. The, the acting CAO was on the ball. There, there are three pages inside the document. Thank you, Carolyn. There are three pages inside the document that need to be replaced. Um, one is an adjustment to the size of an accessory agricultural building. It says in the title if the accessory agri agricultural building is up to 100 square, square meters in area, that's in the title of the section. But then when we actually get into the section, it talks about 50 square meters. So it's not consistent. Um, there's also a, a change to the zoning of, of um, a property on map S1 for 6633 Regional Road 20 being the car wash where there is a rear yard setback reduction that needs to be recognized and somehow that got missed in the bylaws. So we're changing S1 to reflect the fact that the car wash has an exception on it and then there has to be a corresponding exception go in. I think it's number 137 needs to go into the bylaw to accommodate that as well. Those three adjustments need to be uh, addressed as part of the report or part of the recommendation. So Mr. Treble, for those that might listen to this meeting and et cetera, there's amendments and we will correct those. And regardless of the amount of time you spent on this, if there was a housekeeping error, how many times have you brought housekeeping errors or amendments to us over the past year? Uh, over the past year, probably not any, but oh. over the past five years, I'd say probably three or four. So this isn't about making a mistake or trying to close anyone out. If we made a mistake, we'll talk about Come it. Come talk. And yeah. look at that. We just finished the bylaw, and we've already realized that we have to fix things that weren't caught. So I, I have to say that having read it, I'm very pleased, and uh, I know that we are amenable to working with anyone that comes up with new ideas and needs a new zoning. So. Oh, I missed the um, I thought you'd left. I, I lost you there for a no, second. No, I said I'd be I see. Yeah. Are there questions? Yeah. Councillor yeah. Ganan? Uh, I do. It, it's, not, it's not a serious question. As you know, I've been reading these things. I'm happy to see three dogs, not four. Um, <laughs> so all those little things matter. Um, I, just, I just really had a question about... Um, the zoning bylaws on page 112 there's a temporary use provisions and I see that something has already expired in terms of the date 
So um, the expiry date was 2403.17. I didn't know oh. how we go about following something like that up. <coughs> no, you mean another page, 112, isn't that the... Oh, uh, it, it's, it's page oh. 112 of the zoning bylaws is what I wrote when I was reading oh, that. Okay. So the second, you know, the second document yeah, yeah. that you sent out. Page... Page 113 of the zoning bylaw. That's right, yeah. where anyway, I believe. So, so when I was looking at, at the temporary use provisions, I just noticed that one of them, that I think it was the first one that was there, and I don't have it here. I haven't gone back to it. Um, you know, there's a beginning date and expiry date, and the expiry date is passed. So I thought before we get further, I don't know how that works. So, Madam Chair, this we don't even need to really do anything with this one. It, can, it just drops. Um, what it is, some of council will recall, um, Bruce Comfort and a gentleman had um, a wood grinding operation on the Van, the Van Eggman greenhouse property. I think Correct. I'm saying that right, right? Mm -hmm. At the back in there, there was a pile of wood, wood and there was an individual wanting to grind that into mulch. They got a three year permit to do that. I believe they're still operating, so I've got a bylaw enforcement issue, but they have not applied to renew this uh, temporary use bylaw that was put in place for the so that's what that's for is for a grinding operation back in behind Van Eggman's greenhouse and it's on uh, Jeff Menard's radar because it's a bylaw issue now. Good catch, Councillor Ganan. Well, thank you. floor is still yours. No, I'm fine. I, I just you know it, it's little details that because I'm trying to understand all of this so when I see something like that um, I was just curious about the follow-up on something so thank oh, you good catch once they expire they can just drop off the bylaw unless they're renewed so these don't require any sort of amendment per se to take them out of there thank you okay seeing no other questions I know okay. thank you thank you so I'm going to read the amendment um, <coughs> only because there's people probably listening to this and that the amendment to the resolution for the new comprehensive zoning bylaw will need a mover and seconder and the item is that P8417 of the June 12, 2017 Planning and Building <coughs> Environmental Committee meeting more specifically the new comprehensive zoning bylaw attached as part of report PD071-17 be amended as follows remove page 112 and replace it with a new page 112 to add the exemption number 137 to the list of site specific zones and remove map S1 and replace it with the new revised S1 to address a rear yard setback deficiency of one meter for the car wash property 6633 regional road 20 due to a road widening requirement imposed by Niagara region and B remove page 29 and replace it with a new page 29 to address a minor spelling error more specifically change 50 meters cubed to 100 meters cubed under the column titled type 2 10.1 to 100 meters cubed for the regulation slash road titled maximum ground floor area per building or structure mover and I need a mover and a seconder first Councillor Bell Councillor Trombetta Mr. Treble that should say meters squared, not meters cubed. You're right, it does. Okay. Meters squared. I apologize. All that is meters squared. Okay. Well, three is cubed. It's late. So, mm -hmm. the correction to that is that all of those figures, 50 meters squared to 100 meters squared under column titled type 2, 10.1 to 100 meters squared for the regulation row titled maximum ground floor per building or structure. Makes more sense. I've got it moved and seconded. Counts, uh, Mayor Joyner. Just a quick question. Thank you, Madam Chair. Mr. Treble, the second one isn't in relation to the first one, right? They're two different. The um, one that deals with the road widening and on Highway 20, so yes, moving it by meaning. That's right. This is the, This squared or cubed thing is totally separate from the other one. Okay, thank you. Squared. So it's the new page 29 of the bylaw, which I have no idea what page it is in our agenda. Good question. So that squared has to do with? Um, accessory buildings in the agricultural area. Right. Okay. 
Seeing no other questions. Wow. I'm going to call the question. All in favor? <laughs> of the amendment. Of the amendment. Okay. That motion carries. Now, of the original motion as amended, all in favor? That motion carries. Thank you. No, I shouldn't have. You didn't have any. Did you want to go back? I can be here till midnight. Okay. So, um, we are at... Yeah, I, page six, thank you. Okay, recommendation report to remove repeal of interim control bylaw for the Northwest Quadrant Secondary Plan. The recommendation is that report PD 06817 regarding removal repeal of interim control bylaw for the Northwest Quadrant Secondary Plan dated June 12, 2017 be received and that bylaw 2016-106 being the interim control bylaw be repealed by the Township Council bylaw which will take effect upon expiry of the appeal period for the Comprehensive Zoning Bylaw and Northwest Quadrant Secondary Plan, OPA number 45. I need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Ganan, Councillor Bell. Comments? All in favor? Motion carries. Okay, item P8717, it, um, this is an information report regarding Urban Design Manual Parking Related Guidelines. You skipped one. Did I? Oh, golly. All right. A recommendation report. <laughs> I was going to save that till the end. You're right. They caught me, Brian. I said I wanted you here all night. Oh, dear. All right. Jeez. All right. Here we go. An authority to a recommendation report, authority to enter into a site plan agreement for, with 209 Ontario, the car wash. That report PDO 8417 regarding authority to enter into a site plan agreement with 2090754 Ontario Inc. dated June 12th, 2017 be received and that a bylaw be passed to authorize the mayor and clerk to sign a site plan agreement between the Township of West Lincoln and 2090754 Ontario Inc. Mayor, moved by Mayor Joyner, seconded by Council Ganan. Comments? All in favor? That motion carries. Cheapers, now you're going to leave us. <laughs> okay. Uh, information report, urban design manual, parking-related guidelines. Okay, the ref that recommendation re is that the information report, PDO 7617, regarding urban design manual, parking-related guidelines, dated June 12th, be received for information. <clears throat> that emanated from a meeting. Uh, I think the report is pretty self-explanatory. I need a mover. Councillor Bell, Councillor Ganan. I seconded that motion. Comments? Thank you very much for your work. All in favor? That motion carries. Yeah. Okay. Uh, item P8817, the OMB appeal of Committee of Adjustment file Helen Kazan. That is a verbal update and it's in public. Okay. So, Madam Chair, uh, Garrett has a map that he'd like to display. I, I know I've talked to a couple of you about this. I just wanted to make sure that that committee is is aware of an appeal that the committee of adjustment has received to a decision, um, and it's on Vaughn Road. Helen Kazan, back in the '90s, severed a one-acre retirement lot on Elko Road that's in the middle of the frontage of Jeremy Denbeston's farm. And Jeremy is also the guy that had the laydown area for the wind turbines on, on part of this farm. Um, Helen has this lot. She's decided that she doesn't want it for her purposes, even though it was created as a retirement lot. So she's put it on the market and is trying to sell the lot. The challenge is that there is a large pig operation. Um, we, no, it's not wieners. Finishing. It's a finishing barn. Thank you. On this, on the property that's 2,000 head. It's just off the screen. I don't know that Garrett can even get there, um, but you can see uh, Garrett. You can show the driveway to them at least that shows where the barn goes back. It's back in there. Um, and then there's 
there's a setback from that barn for any new residents to be built. And the setback, the way MDS is done, it's, it's a little interesting in that you do one MDS calculation for the whole of the property, whether it have multiple buildings in different locations or not, you calculate a combined total of livestock housing on the farm, and then that combined total generates a setback. So what we've done is the two blue lines, the one blue line is the setback from the hog barn, the other blue line is the setback from the goat barn, uh, and they're both 603 meters because you're doing a combined total setback. So you'll see those lines are way over to the west past Helen's lot. The variance that she was asking for to allow for a house to be built on that pro property was far more than staff as professional planners felt we could support. So Helen's application in the end, Committee of Adjustment concurred with staff and, and the application has been turned down. Helen has appealed it to the OMB. Um, so I wanted you guys to be aware of that, first of all, because that's a discussion that happened at Committee of Adjustment, not here. Um, the other piece of the puzzle is they've asked for a meeting with staff, which I think happens this coming Friday, where they'd like to talk through possible solutions. The lot has been sitting vacant for a good 20 plus years. <clears throat> is there a place where we could move that lot that would be less impact on the farming community? I'm not so sure it is on Jeremy Dembeston's farm, another place that works. However, Helen owns a farm two properties further to the east. And on that property, you can find a location for a single family dwelling and a lot that does not have the same restrictions on it. The, the yellow setback lines on her farm here are totally different. So there may be a way that we can find moving the retirement lot from that farm to this farm is the solution. That's not any sort of a planning solution I can go on fine. That's outside the textbook. So we're working on some solutions to see if we can figure that out. At the end of the day, if we can save the lot and have a house on it and get some taxes from it, that's worthwhile, especially if we can protect or maybe have improved the circumstance with farming and the, and the impact on the farmer. So I'll keep you in the loop as that goes forward and let you know how it goes. But I want you to know there is an appeal against this decision. I think if we were to go and fight the decision, staff would be in, in good form. Um, <coughs> but I'm not sure that's really the solution we want if there's another winning solution out there. So I'll, I'll keep you in the loop, but I wanted to brief you on that for tonight. Thank you. Councillor Rayner. Nice. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rayner. <laughs> okay. Item P8917, Members of Committee, Other Business Matters of an Informative Nature. Okay. We're all informed. Ma Madam, I I'm sorry. I'm not Council. I know. But I need to save my hide. Oh. When we were talking secondary oh, plan, we should have mentioned the fact that Victor Labresh sent in an item of correspondence related to the secondary plan. His concern was that we, he represents all of the various fast food groups, including TDL. His concern was that we were prohibiting drive through restaurants in the commercial area of the secondary plan policies. But that was the old text. The new text allows them subject to council's approval through site plan control. So um, his letter has been dealt with basically for the record, but it is here also for the record. Just I'm happy to do so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Seeing no other, other business matters of informative nature, I'm going to move on to new business, which I assume there are none, having looked around the table here. So we move into confidential with, there's four items, right? Yes. So there's four items and the first one is a legal matter, quarterly bylaw enforcement update. The applicable closed session exemptions are personal matters. 
vote on an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board. The second item is a legal matter, a bylaw enforcement update regarding specific and various active files. Personnel mat the exemptions are personnel matters about identifiable individuals, including municipal or local board employees, litigation or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board, and advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. The third item is a legal matter, an OMB hearing interim control bylaw matter, which the applicable closed session exemptions are personnel matter about identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees, litigation or political or potential litigation, including matters before administrative tribunals affecting the municipality or local board, and advice that is subject to solicitor client privilege, including communications necessary for that purpose. And that will be a verbal update. All three of those, uh, uh, two of those are verbal updates. And the final is a matter of personnel matter relating to an identifiable individual. Uh, it's a personnel matter. matter. Personnel matter about an identifiable individual, including municipal or local board employees. And for that reason, we need to move in camera. I need a mover. Rainer. Council. Rainer and Bilsma. All in favor? That motion carries. Okay. The clerk will now put us into closed by uh, make, taking the necessary arrangements. You're going to stop that, and you have.